Hello everyone. In advance, I would like to thank the committee for the opportunity that has been given to us. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Aprianur Fajri. I come from 11 Maret University, Indonesia. I represent the research team. We'll show our study result about validation and verification of fatigue assessment using finite element analysis. A study case on the notch cantilever beam. This presentation will be divided into seven chapters, including introduction, finite element calculation, test reference, meshing and boundary condition, convergence analysis, fatigue characteristic, and the last is conclusion. There are several types of mechanical failure that often occur due to the influence of the load imposed, such as grip, brittle fracture, tactile fracture, plastic deformation, impact, and fatigue. Static and dynamic load are important things that must be considered when designing mechanical structure. Dynamic loads that are under static yield strength can cause failure if repeated for a long time. This phenomena is often called fatigue failure. Fatigue is a process of permanent structural change that progressive and localized under condition that produce stress and strain fluctuation whose values are below the ultimate tensile strength. Fatigue failure often occurs suddenly without any prior warning, so that it can lead to disaster. Estimating fatigue life accurately is very important to do, where various variables must be taken into calculation to minimize the losses that may be incurred. Experimental method by conducting direct Testing can be used to determine fatigue life in a structure. This method has the advantage that the results obtained are very accurate and close to the real value on the original condition. Besides, the process will take a very long time and developing costs will be very expensive because the process requires prototyping and testing repeatedly. The characteristic of the design must be studied first using computer-aided engineering software before being tested directly to reduce development costs. Benchmarking aims to validate the simulation procedures that have been used. Finite Element Calculation The finite element method is a numerical approach used to solve mathematical equation with certain boundary condition. Doing fatigue analysis using stress life approach, each element should be searched for stress value, then compared with fatigue data on SN curve. Several types of stress can be used as a basis for predicting fatigue life, namely normal stress and shear stress. This normal and shear stress can be summed up with the von Mises equation. This stress component is used in this study because it includes all other stress type. Then, for the simulation of fatigue due to cyclic load, this stress need to be searched the magnitude of maximum and minimum stresses. Then, search the ratio using equation 2. Fatigue data in the form of SN curve, which becomes input variables, are generated from laboratory test results. Usually, this data is taken at zero min, or ratio equals minus one, which means that the tensile and bending stresses have the same ratio. If the fatigue data will be used, to analyze the problem under zero piece loading condition or with a certain ratio, it is necessary to correct the mean stress that occurs. 
There are several theories that can be used, namely Goodman, Soderberg, Gerber, and ASME elliptical. The fatigue life can be calculated based on the rules of palm green minor linear damage hypothesis in equation 4. Failure occurs when cumulative damage D is greater than 1. Test reference. Fatigue analysis on notch cantilever beam using FEM was conducted by Coxal et al. in 2013. The dimension of the geometry model can be seen in the figure 3. This cantilever beam is designed with a minimum life of 1 million cycles. Mechanical properties of the material can be seen in the table 1. Modulus elasticity of the material is 200 gigapascal, poison ratio 0.3, yield strength is 250 megapascal, and ultimate tensile strength is 460 megapascal. This research is using solid elements with 3 degree of freedom at each node, with mesh size is 5 mm. Meshing and boundary condition at the present study. The type of loading applied is zero based on 10 kN on one side and fixed support at the others as in figure 4. That is, the beam only receive uniaxial tensile loads without receiving bending loads. The form of mesh used is parabolic tetrahedral with improved quality in areas suspected of stress concentration. Based on convergence analysis, the mesh used in this study is 4 mm because it produced 90,000 322 elements with consideration of the time required for one simulation is less than 20 seconds. Fatigue characteristic, equivalent alternating stress. In the notch part, there is a stress concentration of 142.04 MPa. The stress value is still below the yield stress of material at 250 megapascal so it is very relevant if using the stress life approach to predict fatigue life fatigue characteristic life the maximum fatigue life based on the design life of 1 million cycles is indicated by the contour of the blue color the contour of the red color indicate a minimum fatigue life of 91,794 cycles. Fatigue characteristic Safety factor The value of safety factor 1 means that the structure is in infinite life. So the maximum value of safety factor 15 means that the structure is very safe. The value of safety factor 0 0.6 indicates that the structure will fail in certain cycles based on design life. The axiality indication shows the stress condition that occurs in the structure. The value 1 indicates pure biaxial stress, meaning that the element experiences two-way tensile stress. The value of 0 indicates pure uniaxial stress. The value of Minus 1 then experiences pure shear stress. The biaxiality indication value approaching 0 will be more valid because the SN curve that is used as a comparison is taken with the uniaxial loading scheme in the lab. The result of the ray simulation above have been compared with studies conducted by 
Coxal in 2013, which can be seen in figure 10A. Figure 10B shows the simulation result with variation of the mean stress theory used. In table 2, correlation and error analysis, the error is very small, about 0.2 until 1.2% indicates that this benchmark is valid and can be used to analyze the fatigue phenomena in other model. Conclusion Several parameters have been analyzed and the results show that in the notch area there is a high stress concentration which result in the smallest fatigue life and safety factor. Based on the result of the mass convergence analysis, not only the value of the parameter but the computation time required needs to be considered, especially if this benchmark is applied to more complex geometry. Area where stress concentration is suspected need to be refined or improving mesh quality so that the result are more accurate. To obtain a more complete benchmark evaluation for future applications, more variables need to be included in the simulation. This study should be extended and the results should be compared using direct testing method. This is the end of my presentation. Terima kasih, Grazie Mille. Thank you for your attention.